I don't care if somebody decides to loot a Gucci or a Macy's or a Nike because that makes sure that that person eats. That makes sure that that person has clothes. Black Lives Matter Chicago rallied in support of people who looted and are locked up at the police station at 18th and State. That is reparations. Anything they want to take, take it because these businesses have insurance. But on Twitter, BLM backlash. So I talked about this a little bit. When was the last show we did on Tuesday? In the context of what was going on in Chicago, you know, BLM is basically now not hiding the fact anymore. You know, there were times during the original protest where BLM spokesman would come out and say, you know, we're really for peaceful protests. We're against the riots. You shouldn't destroy property. You know, what can you do? It'll happen. But really, we're not for that. That's not what we're about. We're for the peaceful protests, and, and we're not for the destruction of property. Well, that's gone. Now BLM is revealing itself for what it really is, which is a nihilistic, anti-capitalist, anti-private -pro property, anti-American anti organization. And they are... Didn't somebody tell me the volume is too high? I think that's better. You tell me if it's too low now. They are basically now supporting the riots explicitly, defending the rioters, saying... Um, saying that it's just reparations or what the rioters are doing, and it's no big deal because it's all it should. I talked about this the other day. And they're coming out and expressing what they're really about. You, you know, and then you see, you see it a little bit. You see it in the riots in places like Portland and other places. The BLM is not. You know, we're drawing from those riots. BLM is not denouncing those riots like it did again originally. BLM has completely embraced those riots. And I think people are starting to figure out what this is all about. In addition, this whole idea of defunding the police. I mean, that sounds okay, maybe, in the midst of you know, we just had a police shooting and it was a pretty brutal one, uh, a police killing and it was a pretty brutal one and, and we really want to reform the police. But suddenly this idea of what it means is hitting people. You're seeing that in, in, um, in Seattle where, as I talked about last time, uh, the, the chief of police actually resigned because, because of defunding, because of the reduction in the budget of the police. You're seeing it in a um, in place like New York. So in New York, which has a very, very uh, leftist city council, um, they're being proposed to defund the police. And of course, crime rates right now, and we'll talk about crime rates in a minute, crime rates right now are going up in New York. So what you've got right now is City council members, leftist city council members saying, whoa, we don't think you should defund the police. Defunding the police is not a good idea. I mean, our constituency, the people who send us here, rely on the police to keep them safe. No, we're actually against defunding the police. So you're actually seeing people within these communities say, no, no, you know, this BLM agenda, well, maybe we'll march with you in the streets and protest, but we are not, we are not buying into this defunding the police. And you're slowly, I think, going to see this in more and more and more parts of the country. The insanity of shutting down the police completely, which is what they're doing in Minneapolis, it's, it's not going to happen anyway. People are still, in spite of everything, in spite of the world in which we live, people are still more rational than that. More rational than that. Mike, thank you. That puts us along uh, quite a bit uh, towards reaching our goal of $250 on Super Chat today so that we can get uh, Brian Rand's match of two for one. So $250 and Brian does $500. That gives us $750 for the night. So thank you, Mike, for the support. 
So slowly people are realizing what BLM really stands for. And it's fans for more violence in the streets of America. It, it, because that's what defunding the police actually means, actually represents. It stands for looting. It stands out and out for looting. Remember, uh, on Monday, BLM was outside of City Hall in Chicago demanding that the 100 looters who were arrested the night before be released. They want to make heroes of the looters. You know, this was reparations. This was redistribution. And BLM is for people are starting to realize, I think, even people on the left who don't want to go there, realizing how insane the demands are. I'll give you one other example. Um, you, you remember in Portland, there was, this, uh, there was this wall of moms. So it was this wall of moms. And I think moms was kind of loose. Right? It was this wall of moms that supposedly protected the rioters from the federal, uh, the federal officers who were protecting the federal buildings in Portland. And there was a whole thing. There was a lot of violence, and the mom stood in front of them. It was a great photo op, and these women, and, and, and what are you going to do? Are you going to tear gas these women? Are you going to go after them? So it was, got a lot of press, a lot of, a lot of uh, publicity. Well, it turns out that Black Lives Matter turned against the wall of moms. They turned against the wall of moms. Why did they wall, turn against the wall of moms? Well, what do you think? What do you think? You know, the, it was at the time, it was presented as the image of motherhood helps the protesters be more relatable, right? And, and they made a point of saying the moms include those who are non-binary and people who consider themselves mothers. Imagine that. You know, I, I, you know imagine just considering yourself to be a mother. Considering yourself to be a mother. You don't have to be a mother to be a mother. You just have to consider yourself to be a mother to be a mother. Insanity. The world is insane. But, it, it, you know, why do you think, why do you think BLM turned against the wall of moms? Yeah, Jax has it. Too many white moms. Too many white moms. So they turned against them because too many of the people, I guess, moderating the Twitter group or the Facebook group or whatever, were white. Too many of the women who stand in line were white. There weren't enough. I mean, if the white women had said they identify as black, maybe that would have counted. I don't know. Maybe. Because I guess you can be a, a, a not a mom and identify as a mom and be a mom. Maybe you can be white and identify as black and be black. But I guess none of these white women were willing to identify as black. And therefore, so the whole group was basically accused of trying to co-opt the Black Lives Matter movement. And since they were white, that was not allowed. And that actually made the black women feel unsafe because the real Black Lives Matter, I'm not joking here, this is absolutely true, this is an article I read. Now, it's, it's an article on, oh, well, we reached 250 already. I, I didn't keep track, Brian. There we go. There's Brian. There's the $500. Everybody clap. You know, a little cheer. Yay. We made it a 750, and I'm only 30 minutes into the show. Wow. Somebody else can do what Brian just did and, and do, a, do, a, do a match as well, and that way we can continue the match. But, uh, Brian, thank you. I mean, you've been incredibly generous for months now. Uh, thank you for the support of the show on a monthly basis. Thank you for what you do in the Super Chat. Thank you for this match. It, it worked beautifully because we got a bunch of people who supported without asking a question. K thank you, Luke, for that $100, I think. And then I think Kib, with his $20, put us over the, uh, over the limit of the 250 to get the, the match from, uh, from Brian. That was terrific. Thank you, guys. So here, these, this group was disbanded, and... 
not only that, but the women on the wall of moms actually apologized for being too white. So they were made to feel guilty. And if you remember the show I did on, on white fragility, they were, they were fragile and they didn't realize how racist they really were, were by, use, by, by being white, I guess. Yeah, by being white. Now, people are reading about this. Now, this is a story I read in Commentary Magazine. It's a reliable source, and they, 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 give, they cite a bunch of different, um, uh, you know, a, a bunch of different uh, sources. So, you know, uh, yeah. I mean, NPR had a story about this. That, you know, uh, the, the woman from uh, Black Lives Matter, it, it, this is NPR saying, it was frustrated because the moms were getting all the attention in Portland. Quote, the media shows a line of white moms standing together, but these black moms are organizing. And, and, and why aren't they getting any credit? So the media was focusing on the white women and not a, it just, you couldn't make this up. If this had been, if Ayn Rand had, had, had added this to Atlas Shrugged, everybody would have said, oh no, that's not realistic, that's insane, that's crazy, right? That could never happen. You literally cannot make this up. And I think people are starting to, to, to figure this out. And I think even people on the left, as I said, the, the, the city council in New York, um, the city council members in New York who are not for defunding the police and, and are pretty, pretty clear about that, I, they don't want this. I, 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 think, I think the mayor of Chicago, right, who is clearly way on the left, and has not deployed the police, and is, is just a horrible, horrible man. I mean, even she is like, whoa, this is a little too much, this looting, and this Black Lives Matter supporting the looting. And I, I think you're going to see more and more people on the left saying, okay, that's too far. And indeed, I think they have to do it if, if they want to win the election in November. I, you know, if they don't distance themselves from the looters, from the cancelers, from the nutty, from the complete, the nuttiness of, of what is going on in the streets of America, the violence and the, the, the just the, the horror of what these people are doing. I think Trump wins and, and potentially Republicans gain in the House and maybe even gain in the Senate. Who knows? Americans don't like this stuff. This is why I've said over and over and over again, I don't think the, the uh, extreme left can win politically because Americans are not anywhere close to where BLM is. Yeah, they'll march against police brutality. If they think it's police brutality, they will not march for rioters. They will not march to defund the police. They will not march for this silly, nonsensical you know, I identify as X and therefore I am X or, uh, you know, white fragility. Up to a point, they're willing to tolerate all that. But they will not go all the way. And the more the left pushes this agenda, the more they are disintegrated, the more nihilistic they are, the more Americans will reject them. And if the more moderate left doesn't distance itself from them, they will get crushed at the polls, ultimately. And, and I, I think Trump, if he wants to win, needs to do everything he can to encourage this. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We've got 163 live listeners right now. 
uh, 30 likes, that should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes but uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support, or on Patreon, or Subscribestar, or Locals, uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value, hopefully, you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if you... Even if you just come here to troll, or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe, because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified. Right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.